Welcome to worship on this beautiful day. Um, we have been blessed with some great weather of late, which is always nice. Um, have a few things to draw your attention to within the bulletin. Um, one is uh, that you know, in order to have a bulletin each week, it needs to be folded. And uh, Linda often ends up spending extra time in that and could really use some help. So if anybody is willing to help out with folding bulletins, please contact Linda and let her know. 
Yeah. Um, also would draw your attention down a little further where it says save the weekend on September 9th and 10th, Dr. Jerry Root, whom some of, some of you uh, may remember, um, this is not our own Jerry Root, but Jerry Root from Wheaton College who has uh, visited here before and spoken uh, in this very pulpit. Uh, he's going to be coming out to do a dis- special discipleship weekend uh, that he's entitling There Is No Fear in Love. So it's gonna be a lecture and lunch on uh, the 9th, and then he's going to be preaching for us on the 10th and would encourage you to set that out on your calendar and to invite friends. This should be a great weekend, so um, please be aware of that. And Paula Funk has a very brief announcement for us as well. Good morning. On behalf of the Hospitality and Outreach Committee, I would like to thank everyone who has ever served as a greeter, welcoming those who enter our front door. I hope you realize that when you stand there with a smile and a handshake, you are offering the first impression to those who come in that door of how we at First Presbyterian Church of Harbor Springs show the love of God to everyone around us. Following worship today, I will be in the narthex. For those of you who feel called to serve in this ministry of greeters, and I hope that you will sign up for a Sunday in uh, September or October and serve the Lord with gladness. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. And now let us continue in our worship as we listen to our prelude this morning. thousand stories of what they think you like but I've heard tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never love you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you can provide Cause you know Just what we need Before We say word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you That's who I am It's who I am it's who I am And you're perfect in all of your ways You're perfect in all of your ways You're perfect in all of your ways To us You're perfect in all of your ways perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways to us love so undeniable I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me 
deeper still into love 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 your good good father that's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you that's who i am that's who i am it's who i am you're a good good father that's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am, that's who I am, it's who I Good morning. I'd like to call your attention to the call to worship. We each have some special parts. So take a look at your bulletin and all the men have a time to say something and all the women do too. So please join me in the call to worship. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all, he has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. Please rise in body or spirit, and let us sing our opening hymn, number 276, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
You may be seated. <clears throat> Please pray with me. O God, the author and foundation of hope, enable us to rely with confident expectation on your promises, knowing that the trials and hindrances of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed, and having our faces steadfastly set toward the light that shines more and more to the perfect day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we sing about God's faithfulness, and remember that he is a God who always comes through, we're also reminded that we're not always faithful, right? that we fail to keep our promises, we fail to be who we're called to be. But because, as, as Craig sang for us this morning, we have a good, good Father, we know that we can come to him confessing where we failed, knowing that he will welcome us home, forgive us, and continue to be faithful. So let us confess our sin before God and one another first silently and then together using the printed prayer. And praying together, forgive our faithlessness, O faithful God, Jesus, who sat at the table with outcasts and sinners, we confess that too often our words and actions are not consistent with our beliefs. Often we ignore the needy, show indifference to the lonely, and reject those who seem different from us. Forgive us, we pray. Enliven our faith, giving us eyes to see what you see and to live out what we believe day by day. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. Because of God's great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us through Jesus Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. So be at peace. Be God. Please rise. God has forgiven us in Christ, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please greet your neighbors.
Can I have the children come forward for the children's message, please? You guys, you can sit there. Um, that's good. I'm gonna sit. Here, I'll, I'll sit over here. Ainsley's gonna be my 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 tech crew and hold my mic. Um, here, I can do this part. So today we're gonna talk about worship. So, do either of you know why we come to church? What's the primary? And there's a lot of reasons why we come to church. But what is our? What's the primary reason we come to church? To worship God and thank him. To worship God, to thank him, to give glory to God. Um, that's why we come to church. And so every week at church, they, they hand you this, this, this bulletin. Um, and this is, um, this is our, our guidebook to, to church worship. <laughs> um, and they give it to us every week. Um, but every single thing that is in this bulletin is here on purpose. It's not, no, some, nobody was like, oh, I think it would be fun to, like, include an opening hymn this week. That'd be really cool. Um, it's here on purpose, and it's, um, it's here to help guide us um, in our worship of God. So I'm just going to go through a couple of um, the first kind of, the, the, I'm just going to go through a couple of the, the reasons why we do certain things. So one of the first things that we do in a worship service, and I have this cool little mouse guidebook to to help us out, (laughs) um, is one of the first things we do is the prelude. Um, Can you guys find prelude on this this little handy dandy thing? So it's at the top. It's one of the first things we do. And so when we do the prelude, we gather to worship God we have the, music, the beautiful music that helps us feel closer to God. And during this time, we can look around and we can see what is special about today's service. So the prelude helps us set the tone and to, to focus our minds on God and on worship. Um, so you, during this time, you can um, look around and see what colors are, um, are up, and that can tell you what season of the church we're in. Um, you can look through the bulletin and see um, maybe what the the theme of the day is, or if there's going to be a baptism, or if it's going to be, or if there's going to be communion. Um, so that's the time where we can really just focus, um, take away all the distractions of everything else we we do in our daily life, and just focus on God. Um, and the next thing that we do, what's the next thing on that? The call to worship. Um, So we stand and we share words that invite us to begin worshiping God. And what's what's next on that list? The opening hymn. Um, So we have the opening hymn there because we stand and we sing a joyful song to praise God. We um, we use this song to give him glory and we tell him thank you and uh, we just are really excited to be worshiping, worshiping God right now. Um, and next we have the opening prayer. Um, so the opening prayer is when we, um, we begin a prayer to tell God how much we love and how much we adore him. Um, we invite him to be a part of worship with us. Um, sometimes during this prayer, it reminds us of something special about God that we are celebrating today. So it might give you some clues as to um, what's going to be talked about in the sermon or maybe what another, um, another hymn that we're going to sing. And the next part that we're going to talk about is the call to confession. Um, so this is a really important part of worship. Of worship. Um, it's one of my favorite parts, too. So none of us are perfect people. Um, God knows that. We know that. And so when God, when we, when we go to the call to confession, um, we ask God to, or we admit our faults, um, and then we pray to get, we admit our personal faults, and then we admit our communal faults. Um, and then at the very end of that, we are, uh, we're always told, we always go into confession knowing that there's going to be a declaration of forgiveness. 
So after we say that we're sorry for doing what we do, um, we hear the good news that God forgives us for everything. And then we do the Gloria. Do you guys find the Gloria on there? Yep. So we sing the Gloria because we've just been told that God forgives us for all the bad things that we do. Um, and what do you guys think Gloria means? You guys are smart. What, is, what does Gloria mean? What are we doing when we sing the Gloria? Is it a happy song? Yeah, it's a happy song. So when we're, so after we do, we are told that we are forgiven, we are so excited, and we are so happy that God has forgiven us that we, that we sing out in joy. We sing out in praise. Um, and so that's where we're going to end today. Next week we'll do some more. Um, but this is all just to show you guys that um, what we do here in church is on purpose, it's intentional, um, and, it's, and it's good. It's meant to help guide us into to worship and to glorify God. Um, so all of these things are here with a purpose and with intention, um, and they're all good things. We don't just decide randomly to put things in the, in the bulletin. Um, so will you guys pray with me? Um, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for worship. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to, to thank and to praise and to glorify you. Um, thank you that you um, give us a, a structure that we can follow that helps us to worship you um, fully. Uh, thank you for your declaration of forgiveness. Thank you that we, we have that and we can, we can rest in the, knowledge, or in the knowing that we are, we are yours. In your name we pray. Amen. Today, let's take out our red book and turn to page 16, and let's join in our song, I Will Hide Your Word Inside My Heart. Our epistle reading comes today from the Ch Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 31. You may find this in your pew Bible on page 913. Righteous through faith. But now, apart from the law, the righteous of God, righteousness of God, has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded because of what law? The law that requires works. No, 
because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, oh, Gentiles too. Since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith, do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the Epistle of James in the second chapter, reading verses 14 through 26. It can be found on page 278 of your, excuse me, 978 of your Pew Bible. James writes, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way, not even, or was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did, when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, on this day, use the words of my mouth, use the, the thoughts, the meditations of all of our hearts and our minds, that your word might be carried to us and your word alone. For you are our rock. You are our steadfast place. Amen. See, I'm going to move this back just a little. There we go. So today we are in our second week of a sermon series on the, the five solas of the Reformation. Okay. Those five affirmations that come from the Reformation period about what it is that Scripture teaches about our salvation, about what Christ does for us. Okay. Those five solas being grace alone and faith alone, by Scripture alone, okay excuse me, in Christ alone, through Scripture alone, okay, and to the glory of God alone. Okay. Last week, we talked about grace alone. Okay. And one of the things we, we talked about was how it seems kind of odd to say grace alone when there's four other solas alone, okay. and recognizing that, that when we say grace alone, we're talking about grace alone as opposed to merit, okay that we are loved by God not because of something we've done to earn it, not because we deserve it, but because of God's grace, God's unmerited favor that we cannot earn. Salvation, Paul reminds us, is through grace alone. But he goes on, if you heard the words we spoke at the, um, at the font 
as we were declaring forgiveness, it was by grace alone through faith. We receive God's grace through faith. Grace is what saves us and, and faith is how we receive it, is what Paul tells us in that section of Romans that we read today. You see, if, if grace alone is what saves us, it has to be faith alone that allows us to receive it. If we were saved not just by grace but by merit, by something we could do to earn it, well, the way we would, would lay hold of that merit would be to do things to deserve it. Works of, works of the law is what Paul talks about in Romans. But if it's not merit, then it's not works. It's just grace. And grace we receive by faith and faith alone. And yet that's a, a confusing thing in many ways. We talk about faith and so often it's used in, in different ways that are confusing and hard to understand. Faith tends to be one of those, those really churchy words you know, that we throw around and, and aren't really sure what to do with it. There are things that, that faith is definitely not. You know, often those who are... Um, opposed to Christianity. We'll talk about faith as though faith were, were this irrational belief yeah. that we believe things we know aren't true yeah. and that that's what faith is, is that ability to believe things we know aren't really true. Yeah. Well, of course, that makes no sense. And if we follow Jesus, Jesus is the one who said to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we follow Jesus, then we must pursue truth okay, and not ignore it. So faith cannot mean this irrational belief, this ignoring of truth. Okay. Others sometimes think that, that faith has to do with this absolute certainty. Okay. That, that faith is essentially the equivalent of knowledge. Okay. But faith and knowledge are different. Okay. Knowledge is something that we can we can demonstrate, I know that I'm holding a Bible in my hand. Okay, see? You can see it right here. Okay? We know this. Okay? We don't have to, have to have faith that it is true. We can see it and touch it and know it. Okay? Faith, on the other hand, is, is not this certain knowledge, but nor is it irrational belief in something that's untrue. Okay? Faith is trust. Faith is assurance. Yeah. Faith is being persuaded of what, what we cannot demonstrate and yet are assured is true. You know, you often see on, on television shows and particularly crime shows, yeah. somebody, somebody is accused of a crime and their friend says, oh no, that can't be. Yeah. There's no way they did this. The friend has faith in the person who's accused, not because they were there and saw what happened, but because they know this person. They trust them. They have confidence in them. Okay. They have faith in that person. Okay. We have faith when we know the character of the one we trust, the one we believe in. Okay. And as Christians, our faith is in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one we trust that his promises are true and sure. He is the one that we trust that he, he has done what he said he has done. That his action on the cross does what he says it does, that we are forgiven, that we are loved, that we are cared for. Faith is just that sense of trust, right? confidence in Christ. And it is through that that we lay hold of, that we receive grace. Sometimes one of the ways I, I think about this and, and, and explain it, it's, um, well, how many of you have ever gone rock climbing? 
Well, there's one hand that's got to go up there. <laughs> um, and there's a number, right? So th- there's, there's a number of us who've done that, okay? Um, and, you know, I, I'm actually really afraid of heights. Right? I didn't used to be when I was little. Right? But as I got older, you know, I don't know, maybe because I was farther up from the ground or what. Uh, but, but as I got older, I became afraid of heights. And then when I had kids, it became pronounced, okay? Um, and yet when our son was in Boy Scouts and, and our Boy Scout troop, we were trying to think about ways to keep the, the boys involved as they got older. I was like, well, let's take them rock climbing, right? It's like, okay, great. <laughs> yeah. But what, what I found okay, is that my fear of heights is something I could overcome because I had a rope. Okay? There's a rope tied to you and it goes up through a... a through an anchor at the top of the cliff, and then it comes down to the belayer. Okay? And I could, I could study up on that. You know? I knew, you know, I could read up on, on climbing ropes and, and learn about their tensile strength okay? and how there was no way I could possibly break it because I just you know, wasn't that big and couldn't f- fall that hard. Right? And I knew that my belayer was trained, that they'd, they'd you know, practiced and they knew what they were doing. I can have that knowledge that it's going to be okay, that the rope will, will protect me and save me. And that rope is like grace. Yeah. And Christ is like that belayer that I know has me. Yeah. But just, just believing that is empty faith. Yeah. It doesn't do me any good. I don't get up the cliff because I know it's a good rope and a good belayer. Yeah. I get up the cliff because I trust that enough to start climbing. It is that trust, that acting on confidence that is faith. The other illustration I've I've heard for that is it's like having a parachute. You can know that your parachute is there on your back. You can know that it's well packed and it's going to deploy when you, you know, if you try to open it. But it doesn't do anything for you if you don't jump. If you're in an airplane and it's going down and you've got that parachute and it's a perfect parachute and works just fine but you stay in the plane you still crash okay. you've got to jump okay. that's why James says that faith without deeds is dead okay. that, that faith that is just head knowledge okay. just awareness of, of certain truths without acting on them. It doesn't do anything. Our faith is trusting in what God has done enough to act on it. And the wonderful thing about it is as we do that, our faith gets stronger. When I was learning to climb with with our our boys and then later climbing with my girls, one of the things you do when you, when you first start to climb, you, you tie in, and then you climb up the, the wall a little ways, and then you let go okay, and fall. And of course, you do it because you're not very far off the ground. You know, you can't really get that hurt. Okay. But the rope catches you. Your belayer's got you. And it's like, yeah, this really works. Okay. Now I, do, I don't only have it here, but I've experienced it. And that gives me boldness then to to climb a little further. And as you you continue to recognize that you're going to be okay, that that rope has you and your belayers doing their job, it allows you to try things you would never try otherwise. At least I wouldn't. So you're going up there and there's a a handhold that you've got to make in order to get to the top of the the cliff face. And it's a reach. Okay. And you have to have your, your balance just right in order for that handhold to work. And you go and you reach for it and you slip off it. And the rope catches you. Okay. And so you can try it again. Okay. And you go and you grab it again and you, you, you get it for a little longer but can't quite get the next move in and you slip and you get caught again. Okay. And you have the confidence to keep trying until you get it down. That's what faith does for us. Faith allows us to act on what we believe. 
And as we do that, we get more and more confident that God's grace is sure. His promises do not fail. And that is what, what we need to be doing. That is, that is what a life of faith is all about. Okay? It's stretching, it's reaching for that, that hold that, that's just a little beyond us and trusting in God to catch us. Okay? And I don't know what that is for you. Okay? Maybe there's someone with whom you're estranged. Okay? And you know that, yeah, I'm supposed to forgive them, I'm supposed to reach out and, and be reconciled to this person but it's scary. You know, what, if they, what if they laugh in your face? What if they just turn their back on you? What if you've done something and they don't forgive you? Okay. And our faith says it's okay. God's grace is sufficient. And Jesus is holding you. And he promises to always be with you until you try. And you try again. And you try again. His grace doesn't mean we don't fail. Faith doesn't mean there's no failure. But we have the courage to keep going. Maybe it's not just, just an estranged person. Maybe, maybe you are struggling to make that step of faith that says, you know, I should be giving away more of what I have. There are people who need it more than I do. And, and being stretched to give away enough that it changes the way you live that you actually have to give things up because you give so much away. And it's scary because, you know, well, what if something happens? What if the unexpected occurs and, and we don't have that, that, you know, that nest egg, that thing in the savings account to protect us? And you try. You take that step of faith. You trust that God is going to care for you. As we, as we, Try. As we step out in faith, our faith is exercised, it grows, it strengthens, and we can do more and more, and we get that, that handhold that was so hard at first, and we get the next one, and the next one, and proceed up that cliff. We need faith that isn't just, just something we give verbal acknowledgement to. I know Jesus saved me, I know I'm forgiven, you know, I know there's a God. Even the demons know and shudder. No, it's got to be something we act on. And that is is more true or certainly as true now as ever. One of the things we are called on to do as followers of Jesus is to love our neighbor. And yet we look at the events of the last couple days in Charlottesville and realize that, that our country is kind of a mess right now. We don't see love, we see hate. We see racism. We see violence. And we recognize that that's not what we're called to. But it's scary. It's scary to reach out and love people who look different from you, people that you might be afraid of. And we have to step out and trust that Jesus has us. And we're not only called to love our neighbor, but Jesus tells us we even need to love our enemy. And we look at somebody who is, who is willing to you know, throw a swastika around and say horrid, hateful things to people just because of the color of their skin or because of their religion. And we know that that that's wrong. And we look at the kind of person who would do that, the kind of person who would run a car into a crowd. I mean, how do you love them? And yet that's what we're called to do. And maybe it starts with just a little act of faith, of getting down on your knees and praying for them. And trusting God to work with that. But if we are people of faith, if we are people who follow Jesus, we can't just stand by and say, yep, I know that's not a good thing. Faith without deeds is dead. 
And it's hard to know what to do when, when we live in, you know, beautiful, safe place. But maybe we can find ways to confront hatred with love, to reach out to those in need, those who are, are pushed to the side, those who are scared, in ways that show our faith, show that we trust a great God who loves us even though we don't deserve it and loves others though they don't deserve it. So my prayer for us this week is that we can find ways to exercise our faith in ways that show God's love and grace to people we would otherwise have nothing to do with. We are saved by grace through faith. And this is not our own doing. It is the gift of God. May we use that gift. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the great resources uh, that comes out of our, uh, out of the Reformation and statements of the Reformed faith is the Heidelberg Catechism, and our profession of faith comes from that catechism this morning. So let us profess our faith together using these words. True faith is not only a sure knowledge by which I hold as true all that God has revealed to us in Scripture, it is also a wholehearted trust with which the Holy Spirit creates in me by the gospel that God has freely granted not only to others, but to me also, forgiveness of sins, eternal righteousness, and salvation. These are gifts of sheer grace granted solely by Christ's merit. Amen. As we turn to our time of prayer together um, as God's people this morning, what are those things we can be lifting up? Are there joys or concerns that you would like to share? Yes, Kathy. So prayers for Linda, who is with ALS, he said. Prayers for Linda, who was just diagnosed with ALS. Thank you. Yes, Kathy. Prayers of praise for, for uplifting music and, um, and for the, you know, just the privilege of having a building like this that we can share with, uh, with others for things like that. Anything else this morning? Yes, Pat. Prayers for Jack as he goes off to college and for everyone else who is going off or returning to college. Um, and also uh, would add prayers for, um, for prof professors and um, aides and registrars and all those folk as well. Yeah. Yes. Prayers for Sheldon Vale, who just had heart surgery. Okay. Sharon. Okay. So prayers of praise is um, Ron Sherman, who's uh, been in the hospital for a while, uh, but is coming home on Thursday. So that's a wonderful thing. Yes, Laura. So co-worker Terry, who's under hospice care for cancer. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Kathy. Prayers for Eddie Stolt and heart surgery. Okay. And another, yes. Oh, wonderful. Prayers for safe travel to Scotland. Um, and prayers asking for forgiveness for envy. But, um... <laughs> 
Yes, Sandy. Okay. Prayers for Sandy's sister uh, with her broken foot. I saw another hand over here. Yeah, Roy. Yes, thank you. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl? A boy, okay. Thank you. Anything else this morning? Okay. Got off to a slow start. And then, yeah. so, yes? Okay. Annette. It's our prayers with Annette as she is um, dying uh, with cancer and just the challenge that that is. Yes? Two prayers. One for our cousin Kyle Sanderson who is uh, dealing with a a recent medical issue which he's home now. Mm -hmm. And uh, for one of our granddaughters, Katie, who is uh, enjoying her honeymoon. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. Well, let us turn to God in prayer. Our faithful God, we do come before you uh, grateful that prayer is, is, is an act of faith that we can exercise um, every day, all day. We thank you that we tr- can trust that you hear us and that you answer our prayers. Maybe in ways we don't understand, but we can trust that your answers are good and loving. And so, God, we lift up the prayers that were mentioned this morning. Prayers for healing for those who are ill, whether with cancer or with other uh, issues. God, we pray for those who are dying and for those who love them and are struggling with the challenge of saying goodbye. God, we lift up Uh, Charlottesville, and we lift up our nation, asking that you would intercede in the hearts of those, (laughs) I was going to say, Lord, in the hearts of those who have hatred and racism, but I believe that is all our hearts, Lord. Intercede in us all that we might instead find love and grace as you have given it to us, and that we, uh, we might be a balm on the wounds God, we pray for those who are going off to college and for those who are going to be teaching and working with them. And we pray for uh, for other teachers and aides and students. God, we give you thanks for uh, for healing. We are grateful that Ron is coming home. And we give you thanks for the joy of of music um, the opportunity to share this space that music might be uplifted to your praise and, and the uplifting of our hearts. Let me give you praise for the music that you uh, allow us to, to have each Sunday, that our hearts might be lifted up to you. And so receive our praise, Lord. Receive our petitions. Strengthen our faith that we might trust you with all of it Hear our prayer, Lord, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us um, continue in our, in our faith by receiving our offering, uh, recognizing it's not just what we put in the plates this morning, it is the offering of our whole lives, uh, of our time, of our resources, 
um, of what goes in, not in the plates, but in other ways. So let us receive our offering this morning with joy. Let us pray. <clears throat> Glorious God, we come to you this day in grateful thanks for your constant and steady faithfulness. We pray that our faithfulness to you will be strong against the forces of temptations. Renew in us your spirit to love you and always be faithful to you and your teachings. May the offering we bring today extend and support our ministry of faithfulness and love to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand and con sing our concluding hymn, number 399.
As we faithfully live our lives in the coming week, what does God call us to do? God calls us to be a Christ-centered, missional church that proclaims the Word of God and demonstrates the relevance of His Word to all people. And sisters and brothers, as we leave this day, let us go out and practice our faith. Let us go exercise our faith. It doesn't take much. Jesus said, faith like a mustard seed will grow, and become a thriving plant. Yeah. So let us go out, practice, and go with God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on and abide in us today and every day. Hallelujah and amen.